Welcome to this episode of DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, I want to take a bit of a look at this. So I printed this out on the uh, GTech E180, and I was blown away by the quality of this. I'll put a, a time lapse up in the corner of this being printed. So this was like a four or five hour print. It was a very long print. However, one of the things I really, I've done no cleanup on this, and it is really a phenomenal quality um, and this is what I wanted to share with you. And not only did the printer, I think, do a phenomenal job at this. Uh, however, I think it's some of the retraction settings I used on the printer, too. And I wanted to share with those with you guys because a lot of you guys new to 3D printing are, are going retraction. And, 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 you know, one of the things I noticed is um, I also do drones. And I noticed uh, uh, a certain rather popular uh, other... Um, drone channel it has gotten into 3d printers it seems like it, it's a common thing for drones and 3d printers to go together and, and i noticed on some of his prints you know where he printed several objects together they were all kind of cocooned together because he had obviously not uh, adjusted retraction and so that's why i want to spend a few minutes to talk about it how did i get this quality of retraction on this uh vinoy object uh because again it's got all these holes and, you know, I did the other one with the um, uh, JG Aurora, and it came out really well, uh, but I didn't, I was not so aggressive with the uh, retraction settings, and I decided when I did this one, I was going to be more aggressive. And so, here's the results, and uh, again, I'm stunned, because look at these, there's, there, again, I have not touched this, there's almost, there, there's basically no stringing, there's a couple little pieces here and there, that could be cleaned up if you wanted, but I mean, this is pretty solid. And some of the thin ones you have a little bit, and I'll talk about that in a second. Now, I printed this out of PLA again on the uh, uh, GTEC uh, E180. I've been really happy with the printer. I've been having a few issues with the screen calibration uh, I need to take a look at, but as far as general performance of the machine, it has been stellar. So, uh, again, I've got the time lapse running. You can watch it yourself. But I want to get now into talking about retraction settings. Retraction settings, what I use, why I used it, and, and how it affects this print. Because one of the things, um, I, get a, I get not a lot of questions on retraction, and I'm kind of a little bit surprised about it, because I would suspect I would get more. Um, because it's a little bit of a black art, because retraction is, is sort of print dependent, because I set up retraction based upon what I'm printing. So, you know, I have, if I'm just printing something ad hoc, yeah, I don't really worry about retraction too much, or if it's a fairly solid object, but something with a lot of holes like this requires a lot of thinking around retraction, so let's talk about it. So, a couple of the key pieces with retraction is speed of retraction. So speed of retraction is how fast the, the plastic will be pulled back out of or the filament will be pulled up the hot end. Now I'm going to give you guys a little secret. If you're traveling at 50 millimeters a second, you want retraction to be faster than that 50 millimeters. So you want to retract faster than you're moving. So this is why I always try to set it about 10 millimeters faster. Now you're going to run into a little bit of give and take here because if you're really pushing your printer hard, you're, there's going to be physical limits to how fast you can retract it without really tearing up your filament. And also going with a high retraction speed like this, if you don't get the other numbers tuned correctly, it's going to tear up your filament. So this is why all these kind of work together in a sort of black box voodoo. And I'm going to try to explain a little bit of that in this video. So again, sort of a rule of thumb for me, 10 millimeters faster than I'm moving. I try to do retraction unless it's just a print I don't care about. The next piece is how far do you retract? How far should that filament be pulled up? General rule of thumb out there is has been, I've seen, you know, like 4.5 or so uh, for a, a Bowden extruder. And 4.5 works okay. It's a good general number I've found. Now, what I like to do is I like to do some tests, and in, in, I typically do tests when I print on a normal thing. I really don't sit down, because I just don't have the time to say, well, let's print out a retraction test. If you've got time to do that, that's fantastic, and I highly recommend it. But what I do is I take a look. If I print out something like this, I look at it and say, wow, this could, this could have you know, been better if I changed the retraction setting, and I just make a mental note to kind of change it in the slicer in the future, and usually it works out. Out. So with this, I bumped it up a little bit to 5 millimeters, and again, you can see the quality. So I, I did this at 60 millimeters, 
at five millimeters distance. So I would pull it up five millimeters at 60 millimeters per second. Now, the next piece is minimal uh, extrusion before, uh, before retraction in millimeters. So this is how much needs to be extruded before it does a retraction. And this is this one gets kind of confusing because it wants to push out a certain amount of plastic. If it doesn't push out that certain amount of plastic, it won't do a retraction and you'll get strain. That's why you see I've got it set to a very low number because what happens is I really want to force that retraction. Now, be a little bit forewarned if you get aggressive on transact if you get aggressive on retraction, I'll spit that out, what's going to happen is you're going to wear out your extruder gear probably a lot quicker. So because you're going to be doing a lot of retraction and it is a lot more work in the printer, although you'll get a lot better quality. So just be a little bit forewarned about it. Uh, and also one of the things I do is maybe on a monthly basis, it's not something I, you know, I, I have a log for, but I typically try to clean my, um, you know, extruder clog, you know, clogs mental slip uh, cogs about once a month or so depending on who gets the most printing and that kind of stuff so it's something to check and, and worth worthwhile to note to clean up uh, so again I set this at a rather small number for this this is the actual number I use for this because I wanted the retraction to happen almost no matter what and so you can see it did now again it's there you know but I want to point out the model, you know, there's clear delineation where you can kind of see things where it's a little bit sloppy down here where it's kind of uh, narrow and that kind of stuff. But up here, it's very nice because there's, there's clear delineation of start and stop. And there's clear, uh, you know, width here. Be, you know, I'm clearly going to get, you know, 0 0.02 millimeters of plastic extruded before it hits this other opening. And so that's when I pick this number and I pick a lot of these numbers, I look at the object or the STL I'm printing and I make some decisions. That'd be great that if, if somebody, and maybe somebody has and I haven't seen it. So if this is a case, let me know in the comments below. But there's, there's some kind of K computer aided engineering application that would look at an STL model like this and recommend retraction settings uh, or optimize retraction settings. That'd be very cool. And when I retire, I'm going to put it on my list to work on writing that code. But until then, it's kind of left up to us human beings to sort out. Now, the next piece is very important, Z-hop when retracting in millimeters. So again, this doesn't have to be a big number. And what the Z-hop is, is the is when it goes to do a retraction, it pulls the head up a little bit and then moves forward and, and puts it back into place. So what happens is this breaks the surface bond between the plastic. So think about it this way. As the retraction is taking place, the plastic is being pulled up at 60 millimeters a second at a distance of 5 millimeters, and the head is also moving up very slightly to break its bond with the other plastic beneath it. So what's happening is this is going to give you, or should give you, a cleaner line down here between the various portions of the model. And so that, that's important to understand. Um, and, and again, I took this actually as Cura's suggestion. Uh, I really don't want to play around with it. I just like the idea. I wanted a Z motion to happen. Now, you don't want too big of a Z motion because what's going to happen is, again, you're going to spend more time going up a greater distance. You're going to have likely more error coming back down. Since this is a very small movement, it's just enough. I want it to break the surface tension of the plastic between the two pieces and move on rather than just dragging it forward. So instead of typically, if I left this to be Z, zero to no Z hop, what would happen is it would just keep going forward and you would pull a little bit of plastic and you would get some stringing. Well here what's going to happen is instead of just pulling across, it's going to lift up and pull across and then come back down and, and do that. So again, it's going to give you better prints. So these are four key numbers I think in the realm of retraction that I think are very important and often overlooked. Um, you could kind of keep going on and on in retraction. Like I say, I, I always view retraction as a black art. 
Um, I've looked at it a lot, and again, I'm kind of simplifying it. If I get into a very complex model, I may actually even take measurements to make some decisions on these numbers, but that's few and far in between. It's only if I really want to get something high quality that has a lot of detail, you really want to get this because this is what's going to give you a lot of that quality. So anyways, hopefully you found this video interesting. If you did, give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget Swag Shop's up over there. It's not Christmas time anymore, but still some great gifts for makers out there in your world. Uh, subscribe button's over there if you like what you saw. Hey, if you got comments about retraction, what's your settings, things like that, love to hear them below from you guys. And we'll see you all in the next video. Cheers. Please click like below and subscribe to the channel to keep up to date on all of our projects.